Okay guys, hey Melissa here. I was a little bit down today, a little bit sick with something. So I'm just going to take a hot shower after I talk on here. But I wanted to talk about um, what daughters go through with narcissists around them, the narcissist mother. And this is not me. I am not a counselor. This is the research I've done from professionals. Um, when you have a narcissist mother as a daughter, you are used. There is no mother-daughter relationship. And what happens is you're used, you're a trophy, you are used to get other people's um, approval. Sometimes that mother will act differently in public than she does privately with you. And so when I had um, a forced abortion, everything had changed. What I had relied on with my mother had totally changed. It was like, don't tell me you're pregnant, like total rejection. And then people start changing what you relied on at that moment. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but that's pretty much how it is. That Your whole identity starts changing. So <clears throat> I had dealt with this a little bit in a group called Grace for the Wounded. Um, this was a great group. There was a woman who had some psychology background behind her. And, you know, I, you know, a lot of women who come from a narcissist mother you don't have your own identity. And this happens in families that are meshed, okay? So if any daughter or any woman is going through this, my channel is geared more toward mothering women from abortion, mothering them through narcissists, family, mothering them through some stuff, right? So um, I'm definitely a mother, okay? But I had to spend, I mean, I love... I love, you know, learning and I've done a lot with, um, not, I don't want to say therapy, but self-help, I guess I'll say. And it, I've done this for 30 years, self-help for 30 years of just going through stuff and figuring out, okay, how do I do this personal growth? How do I heal from this or this? I just took the bobby pins out of my hair. So, um, so basically what you want to do is you want to make sure that you uh, do, especially nowadays, it's super easy with YouTube. It's super easy to be looking up stuff about the narcissist mother, narcissist family. Um, you know, a lot of times women um, feel like, okay, I'm totally disconnected from my mother. You know, she acts one way um, outside the home in a different way with me. And that is extremely true. So my mother... Um, what I wanted to do was talk about my background more with my mother and my grandmother and apply this to the abortion issue. Because what's happening is we are looking at post-abortive classes where we're looking at different curriculums and we're saying, how can we solve this problem? Um, I think the main thing is usually women who have had abortions have not really had a mother. I don't believe they really had a really good mother um, to be able to be in that position of abortion. So we want to start mothering mothers. And for me, that's going to be helping other women and girls, younger women, help them to understand more about child development. I had no idea what it was to be pregnant. When I had my firstborn son, I was like, why is he kicking now? You know, I'm not fat. That was the view I had from my adolescence. So I had no idea what a woman was supposed to look like when she's pregnant and when, you know, your son starts kicking, what that's going to look like. So we really want to mother girls. We want to get in there and help them. Um, so what, I mean, sometimes it's really deep and I think... A lot of these post-abortive classes are not getting deep enough to say, wait a minute here, you've had a narcissist mother. That's a whole different, that's a whole different realm, right? So we need to get in there and say, okay, so you had no, you know, your mother, you were an extension of your mother. You had no real, um, you know, your family was meshed together. You had no real identity of your own. Um, ooh, it's getting hot in here. I am actually like sweating. I'm probably going to take this sweater off. 
So we want to get in there with that. And then, um, yeah, I am warm. I'm getting a fever and I have to work tomorrow. But we want to get in there with that. We want to get in there with, like, I did not have a voice until I actually had my firstborn son. And then I had a voice. Once I became a mother, I was super protective of my son, naturally, and we should be. And once you come out of that and you start voicing yourself and living your own life, you will be treated and devalued and mistreated and treated like you're trouble, right? And this, you can watch any video that talks about this. So when you, I mean, I had this on one side and then I had it with another side with my in-laws. My father-in-law would say, oh, you know, as I started homeschooling, oh, people just like to be different, right? They have to be different. So you will get the digs and the jabs for coming out of something. And I'm going to tell you the best thing you can do is just focus on yourself, live your life and focus on how you want to live and let the people who are mistreating you or showing you, you know, conditional love just drop by the wayside. So I am going to be talking about helping girls with the narcissist mother and how abortion plays into that too and how when you have no voice and your mother wants an abortion that is what's going to happen and we are hearing so many women say I was forced I was forced no you were not tied up physically but emotionally you were manipulated there is a pattern too of coercion manipulation with narcissist mothers they do have a pattern of manipulating people to get their way um and i'm saying this just to be honest i'm not saying it to be mean but my mother had a mother who was mummy dearest pretty much so again this goes from generation to generation until the cycle is broken so i will be talking about um you know christian material there is a book about breaking the bonds, breaking the cycles that I read years ago. Um, there was something else I was going to say. Oh, yeah. I was talking to somebody recently, too, who I was like, you know, my grandmother was Catholic. So one day she had said to me, you are Catholic because I'm Catholic, because I was going to church. And um, I said, no, I'm not. I said, I'm a Christian. That's all. I'm just a Christian. So from there, she started rejecting me. And somebody was saying that with a lot of Catholics, they expect the um, their, uh, how do I say this, their heritage to go down into the next generation and the next generation and the next with no question. You better not even question it, right? The thing is, my grandmother was not a practicing Catholic, so it's really strange that she would burden me with that. But she, um, she got very rejecting after that. So like I said, the love is there if you perform, but if you do not perform well, the love is removed. So I will be talking about this, like in how this fits into the abortion issue and how you better not question what they think when it's, when it comes to an abortion. Okay. I, um, let me see. I think I'll probably save that for another video. And get in there some more with mothers who are rejecting to their daughters. Um, I have another video coming up just about how a woman's self-esteem is affected without her mother being accepting and loving toward her. Okay, thanks for joining me guys.